Well, hi there, sports fans. Welcome to another exciting edition of uh, Physics 12. This is lesson 1.8. And we're talking today about uh, relative motion. Now, usually, uh, relative motion, it applies to uh, the kinds of problems that we're going to see. We'll be dealing with airplanes uh, flying with some kind of a, a wind which is affecting its uh, direction of travel. Uh, so that would be an example of relative motion. Um, and another one, another example of that would be um, a boat that's sailing in water that has a current, again, which it's, is affecting um, its motion. And I'm sure that you can relate to, to those kinds of uh, situations. And those are usually the kinds of problems that we deal with uh, regarding relative motion. Now, you probably experienced this. First of all, uh, swimming or crossing a river um, in a boat. Uh, that has a, a current and you're not going to land on the other side uh, directly across from where you started if your uh, if your boat or your your swimming is straight across you will land in some other place if there's a, a current that's also affecting your your direction of motion um, or uh, you've probably seen uh, professional golfers um, who want to be really precise about their shot they pick up a few blades of grass they toss it into the air and they see uh, how much the the wind is going to affect their shot, so they have to take that into consideration, of course, when they um, when they make their shot. And also, you probably uh, you're probably familiar with the wind socks at airports, which tell uh, pilots the the uh, magnitude of the wind and its direction when they're coming in for a landing, and so they definitely have to take that into consideration when they are bringing their planes in to, uh, to land them. And what all of these, uh, what, what all these examples are of uh, an additional uh, vector that's affecting the motion of some kind of an object. And so it's not only the, the motion of the object itself, but its motion has another vector that you have to add to it in order to determine its actual motion with respect to land. And that's really what it's about. We're, we're just adding one additional vector to the motion of these objects, and that would be uh, its relative motion. So the first thing that you have to, you, you have to understand the difference between these two things, which I'm just going to explain to you. First of all, the heading. What do we mean by the heading? The heading is just simply the direction that the boat or plane is pointed to. Okay, so let's just simply the, the way that the boat or the plane is pointed. That's what we refer to as the heading. Now the motion itself, it may or may not be the same as the heading. As a matter of fact, if you have any kind of a wind uh, uh, or a current for, for a boat, then the motion and the heading will not be the same thing. The motion, what we mean by the motion, is this is the actual vector that's representing the movement of the object relative to land. All right, so we have the heading, which is the vector uh, direction of the object itself, the plane or the boat or whatever it is. That's, that's the direction that it is pointed. That's the heading. The motion, however, that is when you've added in the, the vector of wind or, or current. And so this then would be the, the motion vector is the vector representing the movement of the object relative to land. All right, we'll go through a couple of examples to, to illustrate that. So let's say, for example, uh, here we have an airplane, and it's, uh, it's traveling uh, due north, let's say, and it's experiencing a wind which is uh, directly west. So in order to determine the actual relative motion of the airplane, it's, this, this would represent its heading. Okay, so this would be its heading, like so. But now you have to add to it the you have to add the wind uh, vector to it as well. And so its actual motion will be the resultant vector like this. So this will actually be its motion relative to land. And so hopefully that clears that up for you right away. Uh, again, the heading then is just uh, the direction that the, the plane of the boat is pointed. But its motion, the motion, is when you add the current or wind vector to its, to its heading, and that then represents its motion with respect to land, or its relative motion. 
All right, so if we look at uh, some examples of this, uh, we'll put some numbers to it. Uh, here we have a boat that is headed directly across a river, and it is uh, heading directly across a river with a current. All right, so it's heading straight across the river, and uh, you will need to add its uh, current vector to it in order to determine how it's moving with respect to uh, land. The, the letters here just represent, this would be the velocity of the boat with respect to the water. This would be the velocity of the water with respect to the shore. And this then would be the velocity of the boat with respect to the shore then. So this would actually be the vector of its uh, motion. This would be its heading vector, this would be the current vector, and this then would be the, uh, the motion vector of the boat. So let's put some numbers to it. Let's say the, the river current is 1.2 meters per second, and the speed of the boat uh, relative to the water is 1.85 meters per second. So the heading of the boat is uh, directly across the river at 1.85 meters per second. Uh, the current, the river current, is 1.2 meters per second uh, directly uh, to the left or west. And so therefore this would be its resultant. And we can determine what that is with the Pythagorean theorem. So it's moving at 2.21 meters per second. And we can also determine the angle using the uh, inverse tangent to ratio. And that will give us the angle, which is 33 degrees. All right, so if the boat is headed straight across the, the river, its actual resultant uh, motion will be this, and we can write that in polar form. So it would actually be uh, the velocity of the boat with respect to the shore will be 2.21 meters per second at 33 degrees, and that then would now would be west of north. So we're starting at north, and we're moving west of that. So it would be west of north. Right? So that would be its, its motion vector in polar form. So the velocity of the boat with respect to the shore then is 2.21 meters per second at 33 degrees west of north. All right, now let's say we wanted to, to do this a little differently. What we want is let's say we wanted the boat to go directly across the river. Here it's, it's simply headed across the river, but its resultant is, is certainly not directly across the river. So if we wanted to, if we wanted to, if we wanted the boat's vector, its motion vector, to be directly across the river, then uh, your intuition would tell you, well, I have to make my heading somewhat into the current if I want, to, if I want my motion to be directly across the river. So that changes things a little bit as far as the trigonometry and uh, the Pythagorean theorem goes, but it's still, you're still using the, the basic trig ratios um, and Pythagorean theorem. So if you put uh, the numbers to that again, we use the same numbers that we had before. The river current is 1.2 meters per second, and the, uh, the velocity of the boat relative to the water is 1.85 uh, meters per second. In this case now, here's our resultant vector right here. This is our resultant vector here. So if we want to determine what the magnitude uh, of that is, um, and if we want to know what the heading of the boat is, then we'll use our basic trig ratios once again. In order to find the, the angle that the heading of the boat has to be, we will use the inverse uh, sine ratio, or the inverse sine, which will give us a heading of 40 degrees. So if you wanted the, the motion of the boat to be directly across the river, you would have to aim the boat uh, 40 degrees east of north, east of north. And that would uh, result in a uh, motion directly across the river of 1.40 meters per second. So its motion with respect to land, or its resultant vector then, will be 1.40 meters per second. Okay, so those are quite different numbers than the numbers that we had before. So when the heading is straight across the river, uh, the boat's motion is going to be somewhat downstream. If you want to move directly across the river, you will have to aim uh, the boat or its heading will have to be slightly upstream in order to account for the current. And those are the calculations that you go through in order to figure that out.